What's happening? Welcome to your seventh SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca, and today I want to talk to you about how to detach and attach SQL Server databases using SQL Server Management Studio and using a key SQL script. And then I uh, want to briefly discuss with you uh, the database recovery models, understanding them. The, three main ones, the simple model, the full model, and the bulk logged model. So, um, uh, a couple tutorials ago I had you create a couple databases as we see here. Uh, I had you create my first database using Management Studio and I had you create my database 2 using T-SQL. Now that you've created your database, what happens if you need to move it to another instance of SQL Server? Now, for example, assume that you want to redistribute the free space on a server or decommission a server, which would require you to detach a database from one instance of SQL Server and then attach the database to a new, in new instance blah, 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 of SQL Server. So to accomplish this, you can either use T-SQL or SQL Server Management Studio as we've been doing in basically all of these tutorials. There's currently a couple ways to attach and detach a database from an instance of SQL Server. To attach a database, you can use the SP underscore attach, and that SP is stands for stored procedure. And a stored procedure is a group, uh, it's a group bunch of T-SQL statements already put together so you don't have to do the work basically in a nutshell. I'll be getting into what stored procedures are technically, the more technicalities of it in a later tutorial, but it's just basically a whole bunch of SQL statements already grouped together and so that way you just input the stored procedure you want to use and it saves you a lot of time. Anyways, um, so you can use the SP underscore attach or you can use create database uh, and you have to specify specify for attach argument if you're going to use the create database and the SP underscore attach stored procedure has now been deprecated and it's going to be removed from future versions of SQL Server uh, SQL Server 2014 is in beta right now for all I know, it could be removed from that. I'm not sure. So, but anyways, it's recommended that you use the create database with the uh, for attach argument because of this. Because in the future, you probably won't be able to rely on the stored procedure to do this. So, anyways, without further ado, let's see how we accomplish this using SQL Server Management Studio first. So, okay, um, go to start all programs. SQL Server 2012 and then Management Studio, I'm already there. Um, go and uh, expand your databases folder and we are going to the My First Database that we created a couple tutorials ago. We're going to right click and this is to detach. We're going to go to Task and then we see right here at the top, Detach. Alright, now we're going to check this box check that box that's the uh, uh, drop connections and update statistics columns make sure that that's good to go then we're going to click OK and we're good to go we have now just detached a database as you can see you don't see it there anymore it's not gone forever it's not deleted it's just detached now I'm going to show you how to detach my beta, my beta days, <laughs> my database, um, using a T-SQL script. So thanks for bearing with me here. I'm really tired today. I worked out at the gym for about three hours today and had all kinds of other stuff on my to-do list. It's been a grueling day, but it's been a very fun-filled day of accomplishment. So anyways, new query. And we wait. All right, here we go. I already had this copied from before, save some time. And what this means is execute stored procedure detach underscore database. 
database name, my database too. I know I told you don't use the stored procedure, but I'm a creature of habit and I've been using this stored procedure for a very long time. So it's a habit I should get into using the uh, create database with the for attach argument, but this still gets the job done. And so now we're going to execute this and when we're done we should see my database 2 disappear. Bingo. And we just have to refresh this guy right here. And as you can see it's gone. As I said before it's not gone. It's just simply detached. Now I'm going to show you how to attach the database using SQL Server Management Studio. And to do so, we're going to make sure that we're in Management Studio. We obviously are. Then we're going to go to the top of the Databases folder, right click, click Attach. We're going to go over here to Add. All right. And then this is the guy we're looking for. This was my first database, .mdf. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to click OK down here. And then we're going to go over here and refresh. And then we see it's back again. Voila. Bingo, bango, bongo. We're done there. Now, I'll show you how to do the same thing. Attach the database using key SQL script. Alright. So as we can see, we have the file names and the path specified for the master data file, the not master data file, and the log file. Click execute. Commands completed successfully. Right click. Refresh. And then what do you know? There it is. My database 2, my database 2, it's back again. So now we know how to detach and attach databases using SQL Server Management Studio and using a T-SQL script. You can feel free to copy those scripts down, have them in a little folder, save you some time. Now I just really quick want to go over understanding database recovery models. Since we're not going to get too deep into this, just a brief overview. SQL Server database can be set to one of three database recovery models. You have simple, number two is full, and number three is bulk log. The model determines how precisely a database may be restored. The simple model does not allow for transaction log backups. As a result, you cannot restore a database to a point in time. Your database is vulnerable to data vulnerable. Sorry, tired. Your database is vulnerable to data loss when using this model. That said, using this model does ease the task of administration because SQL Server will reclaim space automatically from the transaction law. Now the full model, uh, that's what I use most often. Um, with the full model, data loss is minimal when the transaction log is backed up on a regular basis. Every transaction is fully logged to the transaction log and the transaction log will continue to grow until it's backed up. Now while this model does add administrative overhead, your data is protected from data loss. And then finally, this is definitely the least used model, uh, the bulk log model. When you use the bulk log model, bulk operations are minimally logged, which reduces the size of the transaction log. But you're going to want to note that this does not eliminate the need to back up the transaction log. Unlike in the full recovery model, in the bulk log model, you can restore only to the end of any backup. You cannot restore to some point in time. So, just something to keep in mind. We'll be covering those way more in depth probably in a later tutorial. But, as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I want to thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next tutorial.